Here we are on a planet which is uh, about 5,000 million years old. It is part of a galaxy uh, which is uh, perhaps uh, 10 or 12,000 million years old, which is one of perhaps hundreds of thousands of millions of other galaxies. And none of this planets, suns, galaxies was around at the time of the Big Bang. At the time of the Big Bang, there was uh, energy, elementary particles, which slowly evolved into the kind of universe we know today. We are the product of a grand evolutionary sequence. We are part of this universe. We are in this universe. But perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us. We may only be an advanced breed of monkey, living on a small planet, but we are able to contemplate the universe as a whole, which makes us very special. We are endowed with a consciousness that can ask questions about the beginning of the universe and learn about the universe on its largest scales, and experience everything that it means to be human, music, art, literature, and science. You could give Aristotle a tutorial, and you could thrill him to the core of his being. Aristotle was an encyclopedic polymath, an all-time intellect. Yet not only can you know more than him about the world, you also can have a deeper understanding of how everything works. Such is the privilege of living after Newton, Darwin, Einstein, Planck, Watson, Crick. We observe that distant galaxies are moving away from us. This means that they must have been closer together than the past. In fact, one can show that all the galaxies must have been on top of each other about 15 billion years ago. This was a real Big Bang, not a puny thing that took place on the stock exchange a couple of years ago. It was the beginning of the universe and of time itself. As Dr. Hawking said, the galaxies are expanding, uh, running away from each other. The further away they are from each other, the faster they are running away. If you run the cosmic movie back into time, you come to a moment, perhaps 15,000 million years ago, in which all the matter in the universe was touching in, if you like, uh, a point. And uh, a key unanswered and perhaps unanswerable question is where did all of that matter energy come from? What was before that? Uh, and if it was uh, made from nothing, who made it? And uh, who made the maker? The picture that science presents to us is, is in some sense uh, uncomfortable. Because what we've learned is that we are more insignificant than we ever could have imagined. You could get rid of us and all the galaxies and everything we see in the universe will be largely the same. So we're insignificant on a scale that Copernicus never would have imagined. And in addition, it turns out the future is miserable. So the two lessons that I like to say I like to give is first, we're insignificant, and second, the future is miserable. Now, that should, you might think that should depress you, but I would argue that in fact, it should embolden you and, and provide you a, a different kind of consolation. Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big because my atoms came from those stars. If the universe doesn't care about us, and if we're an accident in a remote corner of the universe, in some sense it makes us more precious. The meaning in our lives is, is provided by us. We provide our own meaning. And we are here by, by accidents of evolution, and, and the formation of planets, and we should enjoy our brief moment in the sun. We should make the most of our brief moment in the sun because this is all we have.